Hey everybody, Jimmy Versolino here, producing branch manager and trusted advisor with Goldwater Bank Mortgage Division. Today, I wanted to do something a little bit different and share with you a recent scenario that came across my desk. And actually it's a story of an actual client that we experienced. Uh, I found it interesting enough that I wanted to share it with you because there are some things here that uh, maybe are a little bit different than conventional wisdom teaches us about mortgage loans. So here's the deal. The study that we're going to be looking at today is simply this. Does it make sense, or does it always make sense, I should say, to come in with a large down payment or even pay cash for a home? It's a good question, right? Uh, now, before we go any further, I wanna make something very clear to all of us here today. The info that I'm about to share with you is not a one size fits all, and it might not be right for everybody. And you know what? That's okay, all right? So before anything, it's important to consult with your team of professionals, somebody like your CPA or your certified financial planner to determine whether or not this particular strategy may be best for you. So let's get started. As I mentioned, we recently had a client come to us who was considering two different options, okay? Option number one, putting down a large chunk of money at closing, or option number two, reducing the down payment and taking that would-be money and investing it into the market long-term. All right, everybody with me so far? Now, in order to determine which option suited our client best, we had to answer the following questions. Question number one, what was the interest rate they were borrowing the money at, and how much interest would they be paying over time? Question number two, what was the expected rate of return they were receiving in the market if they did decide to invest that money? Question number three, how long would they allow their money to be invested? Now, here's the deal. In our scenario, we had a client who was purchasing a home for about 600,000 and was initially considering making a down payment of 300,000, seeking a loan for, you guessed it, 300K. Now here's the deal. The option we suggested for them to consider was to borrow approximately $210,000 more, bringing their loan balance up to 510, right? $210,000 higher than the 300K, but lowering their down payment $90,000. So as we moved forward, the first step was to determine the difference in monthly payment between the 300,000 loan amount and the 510, which we recommended, right? The difference was right at around 887 bucks a month, all right? So now at that point, the question became simple for the client. Would they rather have roughly an $887 a month lower monthly payment or 210,000 in additional cash that would be invested long-term and could be used for their retirement. Now, after we researched this a little bit more, our findings were incredible. If the borrower opted not to park the additional money down, but rather invest it in a simple index fund or a mutual fund yielding an estimated 5% rate of return over a 10-year period, that 210,000 would now grow to, you ready for this? 342,000. Now here's the deal guys, we've gotta be fair here, right? We've gotta account for the additional amount of interest that the borrower was paying on the higher loan balance, on the 210,000, right? So let's take a look at that for a second. So if you take that extra 210,000 that they were borrowing, right? You took the interest rate that they obtained of 3%, it's about an extra $6,300 that they pay annually in interest that they otherwise wouldn't have, resulting in roughly $63,000 over a 10 year period. Now watch this. Even if our client did pay the interest on the higher loan balance, he anticipates that with his appreciation while invested, he would still be coming out ahead to the tune of approximately $69,000 over a 10 year period. Now, our conclusion, even if our borrower paid the additional interest on the mortgage amount, what we found was is that we could confidently put less money down but be further ahead with the borrower's 10 year financial plan slash vision all the while maintaining the convenience that that liquidity, having that money in the bank provides. Currently with low interest rates, the smart move could absolutely be to involve maintaining cash reserves and passively investing them long-term and over time. So as you can see, in some circumstances, a buyer may want to consider the prospect of not paying cash for a home or putting a large sum of money down, but obtaining a higher mortgage balance instead. Perhaps I could tie this entire case study into one question for all of us to consider. Number one, 
does the rate that I'm getting in the marketplace exceed the rate that I am borrowing at? And if so, perhaps it may be a good idea for you to consider borrowing that money as opposed to putting it in your home. My name is Jimmy Versolino, and one more time, it's always important to consult with a tax professional or financial planner before you make any decision to determine whether or not this is right for you. For more information, you can always contact my office at 602-908-5849, or you can visit my website at phxhomeloan.com. Thank you, and I look forward to speaking with you soon.